TDR Network presents Inspire 2015 I am a sister with three very young kids who is going through a divorce right now with a husband who has been emotionally abusive and still is. How do I handle the fitna, slander, and backbiting so it doesn't affect my daily life with bringing up my kids as righteous Muslims? And the other shuk can add in as well. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Definitely the shuk will need to add to this. I might give you the, the spiritual foundational aspect of the trials and tribulations. The aspect of slander, generally, brothers and sisters, there are many ways to teach people things, correct? There are many methods. I can have a board and write down things on it and you will learn from it. You may change through hope. You have a hadith about mercy, that's what changes you. Someone right there may change from fear and so on. There are methods of changing such as through stories. And the best means of change is when you are surrounded by people that are applying what they're trying to teach you. And that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was the strongest factor of change. So what I would like to tell those who have such problems is to see those who faced it in the past. So I'm going to narrate to you like a story aspect. So those who are slandered relate to your mother Aisha radiallahu anha. And that perhaps had you been innocent, that would ease things upon you. Isn't that right? When you, for example, have an abusive husband, you think of Asiya radiallahu anha, who her husband was, Fir'aun. So these are some aspects that would ease the hardship that you have. Remember what we spoke about yesterday? Don't say, why me? Why only me? No, there are tons of people. I personally look through the questions that were sent. There are many similarities, issues of wives having problems with their husbands. It's a very common thing. So don't say, for example, why me? And that would perhaps ease in things. And I'll pass it down to our shuyukh, inshallah, to give you perhaps some more facts. And may Allah bless your marriage. May Allah bless your children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you a role model for them. Say ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to apply the good that we learn. Ameen rabbal alameen. Tafadhal shaykh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya radu shaykh Majid, I'll just add something maybe brief. You see, wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, suffering from backbiting and slander is something very, very common. Because as the sin increases in our life, the victims are always many, you know. Unfortunately, it's a very, very common sin abundant in our communities but if the muslim has the right understanding if the muslim has the correct uh, angle of view he will actually learn how to appreciate backbiting and slander in a very very easy way we understand that you know this dunya is very very temporary how long are we going to live 60 70 years and then every one of us is moving to the next life the real life you know and every single human that was oppressed in this world, in any sense, from a husband, from a friend, from an enemy, whoever, anyone who is oppressed or whose rights are taken will definitely, will definitely be given his, his due justice by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on judgment day. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the famous hadith, he asked the ummah, he asked the sahaba radiyallahu anhu, he goes, atadruna man al-muflis, do you know who the bankrupt person is? The bankrupt amongst us is someone who has no money, no property. He said, no. The bankrupt of my ummah, the bankrupt in my ummah is someone who will come on judgment day with good deeds like mountains. He hit this person, he harmed this person, stole money from this person, backbit this person. He will start compensating people on judgment day. So if his, if his good deeds are not enough to compensate everyone he has harmed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start taking from their bad deeds, put on him and then he will go to hellfire. So if I have this understanding, backbiting is actually a ni'mah from Allah. It's a blessing from Allah. When I find out someone backbit me, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, what a beautiful moment. Free good deeds. Someone wants to give you good deeds you have never done. You've never went for the hard yards over. Allahu Akbar, it's a blessing, you know. This is why people who are very, very close to Allah used to appreciate when someone harmed them. Like the famous story, Ibrahim ibn Adam, one of the tabi'een, you know. A man came and harmed him. He hit him. He didn't know who he was. And then later he found out this is Ibrahim ibn Adam. So he went to his house to apologize. 
So when he apologized to him, he goes, by Allah, I'm not upset with you. Since the moment you hit me and you injured me, I was making dua for you. Because you have increased my rank with Allah. You probably wiped away some of my sins. Maybe I'll take some of your good deeds. Maybe I'll lay on some of, your, of, my, of my bad deeds to you. And I didn't want you to be a means of goodness to me. And I be a means of, of, you know, of harm for you. So I was making dua since the event, since the, the incident. So if we have proper understanding, whenever you find someone that has backbeat you or talked about you or harmed you in any sense, say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me free hasanat. It's a reason for happiness. It should be a reason for happiness with proper understanding. Allahu A'lam. Jazakallah khair. On that note, I suggest, please don't backbite uh, Sheikh Amr al-Binna. He's a strong guy, you know. He, <laughs> he, might, uh, he might do something. Actually, on a funny note, I always say the mashayikh are the luckiest people in the world. Most of them will enter Jannah without their a'mal because of the backbiting. <laughs> they got. They've always been backbitten. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.